And then can we go to the next slide? So here, this is why I just finished this recently, about three, two weeks ago. So here was a very important moment in my career because it's the first time that I could not do this before. I could not have this kind of confidence in myself to create something where is nothing there. To create this, actually I was invited since 17 years ago to do a show in Serpentine where they want to have video installations and the objects and the work and you know documentation. And then finally I didn't want to have another you know, curriculum vitae in, in, in my biography, okay, or another museum show. So I proposed to the museum, I called them in last January, I said, okay, what if I don't have anything at all? What if the public is my main work? And they said, well, how are you going to do this? I said, with nothing. Give me IKEA chairs, give me camping beds, give me headphones and lockers, which cost nothing. You know, art today costs so much money. This show was zero cost, literally. And so, so I'm just going to walk you through the show. Headphones. First, before. Before people come in into the space, every morning, this is eight hours per day, every morning I, st I open Serpentine myself because I've become my house, and I say hello and good morning to everybody and shake the hands. So the people come in, and uh, they have to leave their phones, their the computers, their uh, you know, watches, uh, bags in the locker, and they get the key. Then they get headphones. And the headphones completely block the sound. So you're inside the space when you don't have any of these gadgets with the people you don't know and you don't hear anything. And then start a real interesting experience. You actually turn into yourself. And we, I had the helpers and, and working with me that helped me into this whole experience. And it was in, a, in, in less than three months, we have 100... 25,000 people came. It would be much more. But we had the, the amount of lockers, so we could not get more than amount of lockers, which is 125 per, per time. And the people just stay forever. Then, so this is the headphones. If we just go a little, okay, just to show you the moment of the experience. Then we have beds. So the beds was, again, the just simple camping beds that the people go there, headphones again, block the sound, close their eyes, and be together, but in the same point, at the same time with themselves which was interesting that we could have all kinds of people who sometimes even never come to the gallery because the, free, the entrance is free, first of all, it's very important in Serpentine. So we will have you know, people coming together, they will never even, even be in the same space together, like a Bangladeshi housewife together with science fiction writer, with a kid, with a, ch with a, with a person from Gaza, with the Palestinians. And then we have a different gadgets and different experiences during these three months. They will be blindfolded. So how the people can react if they don't see and don't hear? And what the senses they can actually you know, experience? You know, the blindfold is very important because you can start to feel in very different way. So people stay in that blindfold space for a long, long time, experiencing this kind of stuff. Then we had a part of this, we have something like platform. Platform is just a space in the middle, we will ask people to come stand and do absolutely nothing. And that platform became incredibly important moment. The platform of kind of togetherness, and uh, people will not leave, they will, they will forget the time, three hours, four hours, six hours. We have the, just chairs, we have them looking different colors, we just kind of show. You know, the, all these are like gadgets in order to experience something with yourself. Mm -hmm. This performance will never be possible maybe 10 years ago. But now we need it so badly. We are such a become consumption junkies. We are completely fucked up with the technology and computers and watches and all the shit we are doing. So we have to actually cut all that. We have to go back to simplicity. Once of the, of the great uh, Nobel Prize writers said, to, you know, the human brain didn't change for 30,000 years. The technology is changing every day. It's becoming more and more advanced, more and more complicated. If we don't go to simplicity, we are lost. So this is the kind of idea to create a small platform which performance take place, which audience take actually part and become part of it. On the end, you know, I was working with the public. The last three weeks, I didn't because things happen without me. The, Lindsay, is Lindsay here somewhere? Lindsay Peisinger? No, she didn't. Anyway, she was another person. I, you know, we worked together in collaboration, Lindsay and me. And uh, this is just looking primer colors, as long as you want, yellow, blue, and red, that's it. And see how the colors can work in your nervous system. Blue calm you down, yellow make you nervous, red makes you strength, and so on. I mean, this is how you know, the, the abstract painting, work, painting works. So to understand all this simplicity, and 
it, then on the end, I just, we just kind of blend in. We was not anymore even performing. We was just part of anybody else. We become audience. We become participators and viewers in the same time. And this performance, I think, is ground stone for a completely new way of seeing work of, of performance art. It also had the incredible... Count, oh, counting rice. Oh, God, counting rice. This is a great exercise. You count the rice. I mean, this is like counting sand, you know, grains of sand. It's not important how much you count to 3 hours or 20 or what you achieve. It's a, point, it's a process. What's happening in your head? In the beginning, you count. You're interesting. Then you get bored. Then you say, what the hell I'm doing counting the rice? Then you get angry. Then you want to succeed. Then you give up the, to, to succeed. And on the end, you understood that the counting rice makes you calm and makes you taking oxygen in your body in the same amount, in the same uh, low speed, and totally change your attitude about life. It's incredible. Very simple exercise. And that's the platform, which was very important. Very simple platform in the middle of the space where the people come and stand. And on the end of the day, will be hundreds of people come and stand just together. They never be there together in normal life in different religions, different social groups, different you know, ages, they just stand. It was a really moving experience. For me, this changed everything. Do you also have pictures from your slow motion walk? Can you go just back this picture, please? Can you go back one? Look at wonderful, this is just family. They just came and they just stand there. And they, each of them had their own different individual experience. Yeah, okay, sorry. It really had an incredible energy and to, to get a feeling of togetherness of, of, of so people. So, Sam was there, so <laughs> tell me your experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, one of the things that I really loved is the slow motion um, walk. You know, when you are... When you're in a museum, um, in a museum space, you're usually by, uh, by yourself and you're oriented from artwork to artwork. What happened there? There was no artwork. The artwork was what what happened between the people. You and was that. Very, you the very diff very different, very different people all in the same space, moving very slow. And first of all, you were with yourself, but you were with other people. And you had somehow magically it happened that you, no one was bumping into each other. Everyone was somehow automatically blend, blending in and then you at, uh, after a moment you you st stopped thinking and you just like carried away it had a, a really unique energy what is this concept of energy like that it always feels like almost feels like you're working with a material that is energy you know, lots of this experience is nothing new i just pick up from all the kind of different workshops around the world this the slow walk is really coming from vipassana meditation which is really known mm -hmm. it's it's just that i put them together and put them into the museum context mm -hmm. which you know you you don't need to go to india to do this you do it here and you can take it to your home and continue so it's like how I I really try to get right mix, which I call a Bramwich method, mm -hmm. which actually worked for me and I hope to work for anybody else. And you're not forced. You can take it, you see it works for you, you take it or you not take mm -hmm. it. That kind of freedom. There's nothing here that you have to do. Like when you come to the Serpentine Gallery, you can just observe if you want and do nothing mm -hmm. of this. Or you can do everything and then observe others. So that freedom is very, very important, you know. And then the people who help us, you know, apart Lindsay, it was the same time with me, three months, and the rest was, we had the 56 people who was, mm -hmm. you know, coming every, every day, there would be like nine people helping us. And they go through this process, mm -hmm. and by going through this process, they change their life too. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. We were sending energy up and down mm -hmm. every day. And there is one wonderful image that I like to show you, which we just bound it together every day. You know, it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. eight hours a day, constant interaction with How did heart. you survive that? I'm still surviving. I'm, I'm <laughs> tired beyond belief. I have to go home and rest as <laughs> soon as this is finished. And then we done diary every day, you know, we would done diary. Still is on the web, you can see. It was diary and, you know, we didn't, and that was the one thing that was very important. This was 54 day. Oh my God, this was close to the end. Good. You really give ev uh, you really give everything, and uh, the public loves you. But it also feels like you love the the public. Can you reveal us the secret of this lifelong love affair? 
But if I just said before in this talk that I always believe that whatever public stand is holy ground, mm -hmm. this is my respect to the public mm -hmm. because I really performance work depend from the public. I, you know, there's so many artists of different opinion. They say I'm making work for myself. I don't care, or I'm performing and I don't feel presence of the public because I'm in myself. I don't know. This is their opinion. My, I have. I feel every single person right in this room. If you go to the bathroom right now, I will notice and I will really wait for you to come back. Or if you don't come back, that means I'm doing something really wrong because energy is going down. <laughs> so it's this kind of int intensity I have to have in the space. <clears throat> and then I love them and they love me back because, you know, I give them everything. I've, I, on the end of, the, of this performance was incredible because the rain in the, on the last day, and was hundreds of people outside, and the people who was inside didn't want to leave, so we could not put new people. So I went outside in the umbrella, and I said to them, but you can't go in because we, we are still, you know, we, we, <laughs> there are still people inside. And they say, we don't care. We just want to be part of it. We, we understood that even waiting is the part of that. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of love in between, you know, that, that kind of unconditional love for your public is very important to me. And because also, I think the one reason why the public may be love me, because I show my vulnerability. I'm never presenting myself as any superhero. Mm -hmm. I show the old bad things. I show to public what I'm ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And that's something that most, mostly people don't do. And then when you do this, you are like, you know, they can project their own imperfection on mm -hmm. me because I show mine. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's work in both ways. So and my public's super young. Mm -hmm. Young people, mm -hmm. very young people, just really. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the, the, I had this it was wonderful idea. I just want to tell you one little story of the Serpentine. You know, the, the limit age we had at 12 years. But this little boy was 11, but he wanted to come, so I let him in. And he was coming, he was torturing his parents to come, you know, after school. So they came maybe 10 times. And each time he come, he go to the platform, stand there, close his eyes, and he's like the cutest kid you saw. I don't have photo with the little freckles, like a little painted, like little red freckles, ginger hair. And you just stand there with closed eyes. And after 10 or, I don't know, 15 times, I, I really interview him. I say, but you know why you like this platform? I say, he say, you know, it's very important to me. When I come home, I, my, my home is so messy and I have to do so much for school and my room I'm always, you know, I throw things around. But since I've been in Serpentine, I go to the platform. I stand there for a while. I see stand like an hour. It's crazy. He said, I go to my home. I stand in the center of my messy room for an hour, and then everything is okay. Wow. <laughs> That's the, deep. The room cleans up by itself? This is deep understanding, <laughs> and he's only 11. So that means I'm doing something good. <laughs>